Before we start this video, large thank you to Neil, Austin, Coding Dummies, Despicable PvP, Nick Borgs, Mark Thompson, Baked Frame, Alpaca, Lily, Mr. Mike on a Bike, Leonardo, and Nick for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today we're going to add ring items to the project. So, uh, if you remember in the last episode, we made a few static character effects. Now we need a way to apply them to our character that's more organic. So, let's make a new script, and I am in the folder for my equipment scripts, and I'm going to call this ring item. So this is going to be the base class for ring items. Uh, if you want to make different variants of ring items that behave differently in the future, you can just use this as the base class. But they're going to mostly all behave the same pretty much. You just essentially want to add an effect when you equip it and remove it when you unequip it. So to make this derive from the item class, and I'm going to close out all other scripts as to not cause clutter on the screen. I'm going to start by making a serializable field for the static character effect and call this effect. And then I'm going to make a private variable for a static character effect and call this effect clone. Now, why am I making two? Well, I will explain. Basically, if you edit anything on a scriptable object, it edits it for everything in the project. So it actually changes the scriptable object itself, not the localized version of it. So to circumvent this, we're just going to make a clone. And then we're going to clone the original and apply the clone to our character. That way, if we change any variables in the future on the scriptable object, it won't change the base that we're actually instantiating it from. So I'm going to make another header called item effect description. I'm going to make a text area here and a serialized will fill for a string. Actually, I'm going to change this to a public string because if you want to use this on your UI, you have to call it from here. I'm going to call it item effect information. I'm just going to make a comment here. This is just for the user UI. So if you want to actually showcase the effect on your UI, you would uh, call this variable here. So next, let's make a public void equip ring and make it need a character manager variable to call. And let's make a public void on equip ring. And again, we need to pass a character manager for this as well. Uh, very straightforward because we did most of the groundwork in the last couple of videos for this. So it is um, very, very simple. We're just going to essentially say character. And this is on the equip ring function. Uh, we're going to say effect clone, sorry, is equal to instantiate an effect. So we're then populating our effect clone variable by creating a copy of the original effect. I'm just going to make a comment here saying we create a clone. So the base scriptable object is not affected. And this is if in the function we modify any of the variables on the scriptable object. So let's say you have a variable for damage on the uh, scriptable object and you want to change it uh, when you instantiate it. Then you're only affecting the clone and not the... Uh, the base script will itself. So then we're going to say character dot character effects manager dot add static effect, and we're passing our clone. It's very important that you pass the clone. And then on remove or unequip the ring, uh, we want to say character dot character effects manager dot remove static effect, and then you want to pass the ID of the ring or the uh, the effect rather. So it will be effect dot effect ID. And you can use the clone or the effect here because they're both going to have the same ID and you're not modifying anything. So I'm going to make a couple comments to make this clear and really nail it home here. Um, called when equipping a ring adds the ring's effect to our character. This is the equip ring functionality. It just goes back to the character effects manager and adds the static effect there. And then on the remove or unequip ring, we're just going to simply do the reverse. We're again calling upon our effects manager to remove the effect. That checks for every effect we currently have in our character, matches the one from this ring, and then removes it. Very simple, very straightforward. All right, so now let's go up here and make and create asset menu so we can actually create some rings in our game. And we'll make a couple of this video because we have a couple of static effects we can use. This is just for example. Now I'm not gonna go in how to save and load these items because it's the exact same thing for every piece of equipment you've seen so far. If you need me to cover that, I will just comment down below. I'll do it in another uh, save game video because there's a couple more things people want me to cover too, like bosses and such. Um, just comment below if you want to see that, but it's exactly the same as the equipment. So um, let's go and make a folder for rings, uh, whoop, not ring, rings, because that's going to bother me if I don't change it. <laughs> now, let's go in here, right click, create items, and let's make a ring. And I'm going to call mine uh, Ruby Ring because I think we have one for fire damage. So the name is not too important, just showing you how this works. And let's go and add the modify fire damage effect. Uh, and then let's duplicate that. And this next one is called, it's called Obsidian Ring because it's physical damage. Now, very important, if you're saving this, and I'm assuming you are with your actual project, make sure you give these rings a unique ID that is different from one another or else you will not be able to load them properly on your character. And then go into your world item database, add them here, uh, and do the exact same thing you do with weapons and armor. Again, I'm not going to showcase it because it is identical to what we did in the previous save videos. If you need me to, just comment below and I will go over it again uh, in the next save video. 
All right, so now over to our player stats manager, um, or sorry, rather our player inventory manager. Let's add four slots for our rings. Uh, go to the character inventory manager base class because we want the option to add these to AI as well. And uh, however many ring slots you want to add, just make a public, needs to be public because we need to reference it from other scripts in the future when we're equipping it or changing it. Ring item, I'm gonna call mine ring slot 01. I'm just going to make four. Uh, make one, two, three, four, however many you want. Make five or ten if you want to. So ring slot two, ring slot three, and like four. There we go. And now, uh, basically, whenever you want to change equipment, which is done from the UI, you want to call a uh, function that will check for every ring slot and add or remove the effects. So we're going to call one on start just for demonstration purposes because we're not loading it from the UI right now. So I'm just going to call this protected virtual void so we can modify it if we want to from the other classes load ring effects and then we're just going to simply literally check um let's make this public because in the future you want to call this from the ui so we're going to say call and also you want to call it from your save manager when you load your character you're going to basically equip the rings and then after the rings have been equipped you want to use this load ring effects so this is just going to iterate through every ring that you have or every ring slot. And if they're not null, you just want to say uh, ring slot 01 dot equip ring and then pass this for the character manager. And that's literally it. So just copy and paste this and change it for ring slot 2, 3, and 4. And if you have more than four ring slots, you might want to make a more sophisticated method instead of calling it ring slot 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But I don't imagine you want to have more than four ring slots. Um, it's easier to have it their own unique IDs for the UI setup, but if you have a bunch, it will be easier to make a more sophisticated method. Anyway, uh, moving on. This is not the character manager. That's my bad. So let's actually make a private character manager variable. Um, looks like we missed this when we were doing our refactor where we put everything on our, on our manager classes. So let's actually erase the weapon slot manager because it definitely exists on our character manager. And let's call the character manager on awake instead of calling the character weapon slot manager. And then we can simply get the character weapon slot manager by saying character dot. Because if you recall, we refactored it. So all of our branching classes are on our main class, which is our character manager. All right. So now down here, you would just simply replace this with character because I mistakenly, uh, for some reason, assumed this was the character manager class, although it is not. Don't know why I did that. And all should be well, but we're probably going to get some errors now because we just changed or removed a, a local variable for the weapon slot manager, but it should be very easy to fix. So let's see. Yes, we have 10 errors. Let's go. This is all on the player inventory manager. So we can circumvent this by just saying character dot and then pasting it here because we have the character manager variable on the base class of this, meaning it can be used. Um, I do have to make it protected though, because right now I believe it is private. So let's go back over here um, on the character inventory manager and make this protected. There we go. And let's save. We're still gonna have some errors because I definitely missed some. Uh, apologies if you can hear my dog barking. All right, character dot character weapon slot manager. There we go. And this should be all that is wrong. Oh, I think we missed one. Let me see. Yes, down here. All right, so now that should work as is intended. Let's go into the game and create some rings and then try this out. Now, what we want to check for is we want to make sure these effects aren't applied before we start the game. So um, I am going to put these two rings in, the ruby ring and the obsidian ring. And then I am going to go to my player stats manager and make sure that, oh, first I'll put in the item descriptions just so we know what it is what. Um, on the ruby ring, I'm gonna say adds bonus fire. Actually, it's not bonus damage technically. I'm gonna say increases fire damage. That's more accurate. And then on the obsidian ring, I'm going to say increases physical damage. And now before we start the game, let's go to our player stats manager and make sure that our damage modifiers aren't changed. They should be sitting at 100, which means 100%. So nothing abnormal. Yes, perfect. Okay, now if we start the game, these should go up to, I think it's 122 and 118 respectively. I, I, I can't remember exactly what the values were, but we'll know if they increase. Now let's go to our player and we scroll down on player stats manager. We have started the game and yes, 122 and 118, that is working as intended. All right, guys, if you did make it this far, be sure to drop a like, leave a comment. It does genuinely help with the series so, so much. Um, there was one gentleman who requested that I showcase a longer section at the end so he could see what the effects of this video were. I apologize. <laughs> I don't really know how to extend this one more. I hope that was enough for you to gather what was going on. Um, but yeah, if you made this far, 
leave a like, drop a comment. It genuinely helps out the series so, so much. We're going to further expand on the character effect system in the next video. And uh, then we're going to get around to doing some more polish. And we're going to try to basically showcase a playthrough of all of these mechanics working together. So in the very near future, I'm going to set up a small hub with a dozen enemies and a boss. And we'll basically go through and try to make it stable to kill all the enemies in the boss. And if we find any errors along the way, we'll correct them in a polish video. So all that's coming up. I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you all have a lovely weekend. A special thank you, as always, to my patrons. You guys are awesome.